hyperfocus, which means that if a man is at work, he's at work. And all his psychic energy and his testosterone is focusing on this thing here. Not that thing there, paying bills, do this. No, no, get out of here, I gotta do this. If I'm sitting home and I'm reading a book and my wife says, honey, you remember that wonderful? I feel irritated, you see? It's not because I'm selfish, although we can be selfish, certainly. It's because I'm so hyper-focused. A woman can multi, not only multitask, but also fluidly move from idea to idea. Okay? Because she's, she actually can think. Remember, you're thinking all day. You can actually think about several things. A woman's conversation, for example, is totally different from a man's conversation. She goes here, yeah, we over there, remember I took the green car, we went to Sally's house, and then we went over there, then we went to Disneyland, and then we went this, and we just, a guy is trying to f figure this out. Where am I going here? <laughs> he said, wait, 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 where are you going? You know, when we're talking, and you follow each other, and you follow each other, you know where you're going. Our eyes glaze over after about two minutes. <laughs> are you listening? Uh, well, get to the point. There is no point. No, truly, there is a point. But let me tell you something. God, women think on the predominantly left side of the brain, which is predominantly details, concreteness, feeling, intuition, interpersonal focus. Who is this person? So the brains of men and brains of women, I teach this in premarital and marital and individual therapy so that people have it down tight. Reading books, reading the tapes and getting this down. Let's take a look now, because we don't have too much time, on the gender differences in the most intimate relationships. You know, you're really in love with somebody. Oxytocin flows in a woman if you hug her tightly, kiss her and tell her she's lovely, and then you listen to her and bring her out. It could be the same or the opposite. The oxytocin flows and her test, her, um, uh, uh, Cortisol, which is the stress hormone, burns up. She feels good. That doesn't happen to men. Our oxytocin flows when we're making love to the bride we fell in love with. And it's a tremendous experience of gratitude, a tremendous experience of, of love and affection. And our oxytocin just flows. And God did that. So are guys only interested in one thing? Yes. Oh, lust, if he's, if he's got that problem, yes. But many guys don't, so therefore, if he truly loves his wife. So women have to be aware of that when they just feel, I don't feel like having sex tonight. Why? Oh, I just had a pizza, you know, I'm feeling okay. <laughs> this is not a legitimate cause according to canon law. Okay. Well, I'm an American woman. I have rights now. I'll let you know. Here's this poor guy. He figured, no, come on. You know my oxytocin, Gabish. <laughs> oh, you're just a pig. He's not a pig. So God is talking about sacrifice. The woman says, hey, my husband longs to be intimate with me. Absolutely. Hmm, that's, I like that. Hmm, when I play jazz, that's what people do, especially the black people. Yeah, go ahead, brother, tell the truth. Never hear that with white people. I don't know why that is. <laughs> We're very subdued. Yeah. So, let's look at the hormones in male, vasopressin and testosterone, which pushes men to want to overcome some obstacle. Want to destroy something. That's why his little boys, you know, that's because God himself is always in the work of destruction of evil. Psychological evil, spiritual evil, moral evil, economic evil. He's always, his love is always oriented towards the destruction of evil. He's a warrior all through the Bible, even Jesus. Jesus is a warrior. Get out of this woman, get out of that man. He rebukes the fever. Stop now. Get lost. 
He's terrifying. Then he goes to the hypocrites. I got your number. I see you. How are you going to escape hell? Look what you do to these people with all your arrogant pride and your self-righteousness. I got your number. This is a warrior. He's not nice. He's good. He's loving. He's passionate. He gives his life for you. That's the kind of men want to follow. That's the kind of women, that's the kind of men women long for. I feel safe and protected, Dr. Mango, with my husband because he's not nasty, but he is totally not nice. He stands up for me. If I had a dime for every woman who told me from, quote, nice men, you know, he's very nice and he's very devout, but he's never once stood up for me when his mother comes in and attacks me verbally. I don't feel safe, I don't feel protected. Women want to feel protected by a man who's not a wimp and nice. Religiously nice people are the worst. They are, they are. Women know this. We know it. We know it. we're in the presence of a father who doesn't have his manhood, or a priest, or a doctor, who cannot tell you the truth, who cannot risk his life. And you feel, I don't trust this person. They're very nice, but I don't trust them. Nice is always about narcissism, it's about me. Nice is always about me. I don't want to upset myself. I don't want people not to like me. So I'll say this truth, but I'll avoid the difficult truth. Okay? And women feel this. They feel they're in the presence of a gushy guy, and they don't feel safe. And their feeling of romantic attraction goes down because he's a very nice fellow. Passive. He lets things happen. He says, be like Jesus. I had this woman tell me, I'm quitting my boyfriend. A street guy came up the other day and said, hey, baby, and threatened me. And my boyfriend said, keep walking. Maybe he'll go away. Be like Jesus. Would you date that man? No. And you know what? It's probably not his fault. Because with a 60% divorce rate, we have very few fathers who are saying to their sons, you got what it takes, son, I love you. And I'm gonna show you how to protect and defend people, how to love people, how to sacrifice, how to be a warrior, how to be a lover, how to lead. I'm gonna show you, don't worry about it, you're gonna make it, I'm your daddy. And also Uncle John's gonna help you. And these mentors over here, your coaches and your Boy Scout leaders and uh, John from the Knights of Columbus. I grew up with this kind of thing. I don't take any credit for this. I got grown by these guys who were affirming me. Most guys don't have it anymore. That's sad. So pray for your men, ladies. Do not criticize them. Don't put them down. They want to be men. I started an organization called Warrior Brothers just for this, and it's doing wonderful. You see guys growing all over the place. Okay, fellas, now we're gonna go out and we're gonna do disaster response training. Yeah, okay, sir. Now we're gonna go out and do counterterrorism. We're gonna study jihad and how to do it. Yes, sir, let's go out. Now we're gonna go out and learn rifle marksmanship so we can kill the opposite Italian families in Brooklyn. Hey, come on. You mean you gotta do what you gotta do. I got permission from the Vatican for that, right? <laughs> so let's look at the three needs of women in an intimate relationship with a guy. One, she has a profound psychic need due to her hormones and to her psychological uh, uh, need structure of connection. Nothing matters until we're connected. And connection happens when the man initiates daily hugs, kisses, and verbal affirmation. Every day. Every day? Every day. 